Romans chapter 12, verse 1 and 2. See, it wouldn't be no good for me to be up here uh, if I didn't believe what I was preaching. And I believe that God sometimes allows you to go through the valley to make you realize how really blessed you really are. And I want you to know you got a faith preacher in front of you. you got a pastor in front of you that believes exactly what the Bible says. And I, I don't try to... to to wash it down or water it down, or I believe in what, what the Bible says. So if you have your Bibles, Romans chapter 12, verse 1 and 2. I don't know what the Lord's going to do, but it's going to be good. I step out on water today, and I'm not just stepping out, I'm walking on it. Romans chapter 12, help me Holy Ghost. Verse 1 and 2. It says, therefore... I urge you, I beseech you, I beg you. Listen to this. I urge you, I beseech you, I beg you. Brothers, sisters, in the view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies, listen to me, that's what I'm doing right now, I offer my body as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your spiritual act of worship. Listen to me. Verse 2, do not conform any longer to the pattern of this world. Do not be conformed to the pattern of this world. But be ye transformed. Watch this. How do you do it? By the renewing of your... How do you be transformed? By the renewing of your mind. Then... You, listen to what it says, after your mind has been transformed and renewed, he says, then, then you'll be able to test and approve. It says approve. Approve what God's will is. His good pleasure and perfect will. See, there is a permissive will and there is a perfect will. There is a permissive will and there is a perfect will. Now hear me out this morning. A lot of people are living in the permissive will of Jesus Christ. Oh, you're coming to church. Oh, you're, you're a child of God. You're putting your tithes in. You're, you're faithful in some areas of your life. But how many of you know God will never really settle for a permissive thing? God is looking for a perfect thing. God is looking for a thing that you sacrifice and that has been transformed. The word transformed in the Greek it's metamorpho. I know that's a crazy word, but it's just the way it is. Metamorpho. Everybody say metamorpho. metamorpho. Come on, put that foo in it. You know what I'm saying? Metamorpho. You know what I'm saying? So when you say this word, it's metam metamorpho. We get the word metamorphosis from metamorpho. And what that means is a transformation. You go from a, a silkworm in, into a, a, a butterfly. That's called transformation. But notice this. There's always a stage called cocoon. There's a lot of Christians trying to miss the cocoon stage to get to the transformation stage, but it never works. You can't live like the devil on a Monday and come into church on a Sunday and say, I've been transformed. There's got to be a difference in your life. How many of you know this? You can tell a Christian from a non-Christian, even if they say, yeah, I'm born again. You know deep down in your soul, man, what's going on. You know what's going on. So today I want to give you a metamorpho. I want to give you a metamorphous word. I want to get you a, give you a transformational word that's going to stick deep down in your spiritual bones. The Bible says, do not be conformed any longer to the pattern, pattern, pattern of this world. How many of you know tradition is a pattern? Tradition is a pattern. And your marriage can become a traditional pattern if you're not careful. The church can become a traditional pattern if you're not careful. Your, your walk with the Lord can become a traditional pattern if you're not careful. Now listen to me. I want you to get in. I, I'll preach here in a moment. But I've got to set this groundwork. Every Christian, everybody say I'm listening, should be transforming. Every, listen to me. Every Christian should be transforming. 
Everybody should be transforming. Every Christian marriage should be transforming. You should be transforming in your marriage. You should be changing in your marriage. If you're doing the same things after 25 years of marriage that you're doing now, you're boring. You're boring. That's right, I'll say it again. You're boring. You need to do some hot, steaming, rocking stuff. You need to shock her, you know what I'm saying? So what I'm saying, guys, you've got to have a transformational marriage. If you claim to be a child of God, Jeremy, you should be transforming. Question's this. Is Elkhorn Baptist Church a metamorpho? Is Elkhorn Baptist Church a metamorphosis? Are we transforming into the image of God? And I can say for the most of Elkhorn Baptist Church, we're a metamorpho. We are transforming. You say, Brian, how do you know? Because we're running out of seats. Brian, how do you know? The parking lot looks like a, looks like a Winn-Dixie on, on a Monday. You know what I'm saying? It's crazy. But here's what I want to tell you. Conform means this word. To be similar in form, character, custom, or mode. That's what it means. Transform means to be completely changed in nature. That means when you say, I am born again, you are changed from the inside out. See, a lot of people are trying to change their outsides and make their insides different. God changes you from the inside out. And when you get a transformation of metamorpho on the inside, I promise you, your outside will follow what's on the inside. Sure will. Your language will change. Come on, help me preach. Your walk will change. Everything will change because why? You had a metamorpho. <laughs> you had a metamorpho. God said if you want to call yourself a Christian, there should be a transformation. How many of y'all say amen? Christians should be transformational all the time. Now realize this. Transformation is a process. You're not going to automatically say, I'm born again. You're going to have all everything given to you. When I became a Christian, huh, there's no way God could have picked me up. He could if he wanted to. And placed me here today. I have grown. I have been transformational. I am still growing as a Christian. I am still thinking and growing and, 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 and the process of a Christian right now. They call that big word sanctification. We're all being sanctified. It's a process. But here's what I know. And this is a very unpopular preaching I'm getting ready to talk about. And not everybody stands for this, but I believe I'm at the right house today. But this is a very unpopular stance. But I call holiness back into the church. I call holy living back into the church. I call holy giving back into the church. I call a Holy Ghost Spirit-filled churches back in here. I say that God can do it, and he wants to do it again. But you've got to be transformational. <coughs> you've got to be transformational. Church, I want you to listen to me. I wrote this down. I want you to write this word down. Don't you dare conform to the, wor to the world. Don't you conform to the world. Listen to me. I, I wrote this down. Don't you dare trade in your holiness for dirtiness. Don't you dare trade in your holiness for dirtiness. Don't you dare trade this word, this sacred Bible, in for the worldly standards. You know what we need? We need some holy mamas and some holy daddies. We need some daddies and mamas and grandpas to stand back up and say, I don't care if you like it or not, this is what God said. And this is what I'm going to do. And I'm going to stand on it. We need holiness back into the church. You say, well, Brian, that's old Pentecostal word. No, that's a word from the Lord. He says, be ye holy. Be ye holy. And that's what we need. We need holy people. Why isn't church working? You want me to tell you? Why a lot of churches are not working? There's no difference. There's no difference, none whatsoever. You, you go to school. Y'all hear cussing. You come to church. You hear cussing. You say, Brian, have you ever heard people cuss? Absolutely. <coughs> you, you go to the world, you, you, hear, you see things, you come to church, you see bad things too. There's not been a metamorpho. There's not been a transformation. You say, Brian, do you still cuss? No, I don't. Do I want to? Sometimes I do. 
I'm going to square y'all up. Y'all look at me like, I can't believe the reverend said, yes, I did. Sometimes my skin wants to rise up and hurt people. Drop kick you in the name of Jesus. And y'all want to do it too. But this is a true word going forward today. I do not allow my flesh to dictate my spirit. My spirit dictates my flesh. And there's got to come a time when you quit making excuses and said, I am conformed, but you've got to be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Your mind. Your mind. Your mind, hallelujah. It's your mind. So many Christians are trading in their holiness for dirtiness. Hallelujah. God is transforming me and you for his purpose here on earth. Y'all listen to me, Lord, that your will will be done on earth as it is in. On earth as it is in. On earth as it is in. You are God's messengers. You are God's hands. We are God's feet. We are God's mouthpiece. We are the ones that call ourselves Christians. But people look at us today and say, no, if that's the way it is, I don't want it. Can I be honest with you? If I was not a Christian, if I was not a Christian, and I was looking for a holy, spirit-filled church that believed all the Bible, I'm just asking you this real quick. Say someone never read the Bible. And say God was starting to work on them. And say they picked their Bibles up for the first time, Tommy. And they read Acts chapter 2, Brother Bob. They are Pentecost. You say, Brian, that's all you talk. That's when the church was established. That, if you want to see how a church should look, go back to Acts chapter 2, and it explains to you exactly in detail how the church should look. If somebody never went to church... Never read the Bible, but they just accidentally picked the Bible up one Saturday night and said they read Acts chapter 2. And they said, I think I'm going to go to church on Sunday. If they walked into Elkhorn Baptist Church, would they see a transformed church or a conformed church? Would they see a spirit-filled church? Or would they see somebody says, you know what? I seen them last night at the Whistling Pig, which is not there no more, matter no more. I seen them in a bar. I'm going to hit you hard today. Listen to me. It's about time that the pastor preaches truth. It's about time that they quit cowering down because they're not going to be a popular preacher. I don't care. This is not a popularity contest. This is a divine, Holy Spirit, filled word straight from the throne room of Jesus Christ. Hey, I feel the Holy Ghost. Y'all prayed for us. Don't back down on me now. Is there a difference? Is there a metamorpho in your life? Is there a metamorphosis in your life? Hey, are you still, are you still, oh, oh, worm, oh, crawling around on the, on the ground, oh, silkworm. You know, the silkworm would never become a butterfly if he never went to the cocoon. Elkhorn, this is a word, y'all listen to me. This is a word straight for you and I. If we are going to go from a silkworm to a butterfly, there's going to have to be a cocoon stage. And during the cocoon stage, there's something phenomenal that happens. God gives them wings. God gives them wings. They used to crawl around on the ground. They used to be somebody else's food. But God spoke into my spirit. He said, I am rising up in Elkhorn, and I'm making them not a silkworm, but I am transforming them into a butterfly that they can fly in the name of Jesus. I want y'all to please accept this word in the name of God. It's time that the churches, it's time that marriages, it's time that Christians fly. We've been crawling and crawling. And getting by for so long. And God never meant for us to barely skim by, 
get by, just do all you can, be the best while you're alive. God did not die for that. God died for a transformational church. He died that for you and I to get in our minds and make our minds up, I'm going to do that. Listen, if you don't want to walk, you'll never walk. Listen to me. If you say, oh, I'm glad that's for you, Brother Brian, and, but that's just not for me. I, my, that's just the way my whole life's been. I've been a silkworm all my life. You'll stay a silkworm. There's got to come a time that you look that devil in the eye and you say, devil, enough is enough. I, I feel that in my spirit this morning. Devil, the, it's enough. Devil, you've had me down way too long. Devil, I'm not staying down long no more. I'm not going to stay here no more. I've made my mind up. I'm getting out of my bed. I'm going to do something for Jesus Christ in the name of God. I'm going to do it. I made my mind up. See, here's, here my mama calls me just old hard-headed Rafferty. But here's what I'll tell you. When the Spirit of God is alive in you, and if God be for me, who can be against me? That means I can rise up and say, hey, I made my mind up. I'm not going back. Now, I don't know who this word's for. Maybe just for me. Because I tell you, this whole week, I had to make myself do stuff I did not want to do. It would be so easy just to lay in bed. Hallelujah. Preach it, Brian. It had been so easy just to lay down. Oh, I could have communicated. I had a text phone. And you can do that. It had been so easy just to lay in bed and not do nothing. But, Greg, I can't do that. There's something, listen to me, there's something in me called the Holy Ghost. And I know y'all don't like to talk about it a lot. And Southern Baptists have skipped over it. They preach on God and they preach on Jesus, but they leave the Holy Ghost out. But I'm telling you something. God said, I've gone to be with, but be with God. Jesus, I've gone to be with God. But while I have gone, I've given you something greater, and you will do greater works than what I did. It's called the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost. Without the Holy Ghost, you can't preach, you can't walk, you can't talk, you can't do nothing. You say, Brian, you get a little happy, don't you? Can I tell you the Holy Ghost is happy? Can I tell you the Holy Ghost wants you to be happy? My goodness, you think he died for you to put a frown on your face and to lay down, sit back, and shut up and not do nothing? I don't feel good, and I'm still doing it. And let me tell you something, what's happening to me as I am preaching. I think you can even see it. I'm getting stronger and stronger and stronger and stronger. Why? Because the Holy Ghost. So you can doubt him if you want to. I'm telling you, I'm proof this morning that he's alive. I'm proof this morning that there has been a transformation, a metamorpho in my life. you got to want it. God said to be transformed, you got to renew your mind. How, how are you transformed? It's not a big theological debate. You don't have to have a business meeting. You don't even have to have a breakout session on this. Listen to this preacher. I'm almost done, I think. He says, if you want to be transformed, if you want to be trans, Jamie, if you want to be transformed, it's by the renewing of your mind. One of the most dangerous tools that God has given Christians is their minds. Is their minds. And you know this is the word straight from the Lord. You know the number one thing that Satan is after? Your mind. Your mind. Because he knows that your mind is the steering wheel of your life. Oh, that a preach right there. He knows that your mind is the steering wheel of your life. Listen to that. Oh, thank God I love the Holy Ghost. Woo! Mm. You can listen to me. If it's in your mind and you made your mind up, you'll go do it. I don't know. Should I go tonight or should I not go? Make up your mind. 
Make up your mind. Am I going to praise the Lord or am I not going to praise the Lord? Make up your mind. Am I going to tithe or am I not going to tithe? Make up your mind. Because either way, you make your mind up, you'll be sold out. You'll go that direction. Because why? Your mind is the steering wheel of your life. If I'm perfect, spirit, oh, I love the Lord. I can't even talk right now. I just got it coming in so fast. I'm telling you, if I make my mind up and the Holy Ghost is driving, whoo, he do like it every time. Wham. Right there. All you'll ever have in your life, this is the word, is a plus sign. All you'll ever have in your life, if Jesus Christ, the good word, is the driver of your life, he'll drive you to the plus sign every time. Every time. I don't know if I can do it. All things are crazy. Yes, you can. There's a plus sign. See, some of you are focused. You want to take off that top part. There's a minus sign in your life. I'm so glad that God completed the cross. He said, it is finished. It is finished. Whatever you need, it is finished. I know some of you are still struggling with this message because you're sitting there going, Brian, you don't understand my situation. No, you're telling God that God don't understand your situation. You're not telling me. You're right. I don't understand a lot of things that y'all are going through. But God does. And if God, he owns your mind. He's the steering wheel of your life. Let him drive. Jesus, take the wheel. Carrie Underwood done a good song. Sometimes I don't even know if she even realized the profound prophetic word that she was speaking in that song. God's so big, he'll take a country artist and let him talk about Jesus. He'll take a Tim Tebow. Well, he, he's a football player. But he's got Jesus. Can I tell y'all, it's so simple, but it, we, we just take it for granted. You've got the most powerful thing in you than ever before. And I mean this with all I am. If you, if you are a child of God, and you've got Jesus, that's all you need. That's all. Jesus is enough. He is enough. He is enough. Everybody turn to your neighbor again and say, are you conformed? conformed. Are you transformed? Hey, how many of y'all remember this? Y'all remember King Nebuchadnezzar had three little Hebrew boys. I wrote this down. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And he put them in a fiery what? Furnace. Y'all remember that? And I started thinking about this week, and I was reading in Daniel chapter 3. I know that God was the fourth person in there with them. But something, listen to me, something happened even before God got there. I started thinking about this. They put them in the fire, turned it up seven times hotter, and all of a sudden, King Nebuchadnezzar said, they're gone. He looked down, and then he seen the fourth person. But something happened before Jesus got there. Never thought of it to this week. They had something in their head called a thermostat. Listen to me. Some of you are in a hot situation in a hot furnace right now. But what if I told you, if you change the thermostat, it changes the temperature. So in their mind, Scott, they already made their mind up, put me in a fire. God's the thermostat. He's going to turn the heat down. No matter what's going on, God is the thermostat. So no matter where you're at, we can make it. I wrote this down. Listen to me. Change the, to change the furnace, the situation, you've got to change the thermostat in your head. If you walk around all the time, I'm sick, I'm sick. You know, if I was the devil, I'm just telling you, if I was the devil, which I'm not, I know some of you think I am. But if I was the enemy, and a child of God who had the most powerful source in his and her life, would always say, well, I'm sick. My goodness, I'm sick. I'm, if I was the devil, I would have a heyday with you. I would whisper this. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. It's not looking good for you. Oh, my goodness. Is that two hairs that fell on the floor? What's wrong with it? Now your hair's falling out. What's going on with you? Is that your left ear? Is your left ear hurting you now? Oh, my God, now your head's hurting. I'm telling you, if I was the enemy, and you kept speaking death, death, in death, 
Because the devil knows death language. But he hates language that you say, oh, I don't, may not feel good, but I'm getting up anyhow. Yeah, I know it don't look good. My friends have left me, but I can praise him anyhow with a friend or without a friend. I may be the only one in Elkhorn this morning that may have some stuff going on, but I choose today to praise the Lord. I got a thermostat in my head, and I turn up the Holy Ghost. I read an article this week about a German Shepherd police dog. Clint, I thought about you when I was reading this. And I think this is something, I, I, I read this, I said, this is Clint Durham right here. Clint's a vet. This German Shepherd police dog, she was pregnant with puppies. This German Shepherd dog was chasing a truck one day, and the truck veered over just a little bit and hit the mama dog. Well, they, they took the mama dog to the vet and got checked out, and what happened was it broke her back two legs and damaged her hip. Well, eventually... This mama dog had five puppies, and the, she nursed the puppies, and they had to literally lo relocate the mom and resituate the mom so the pups could nurse off of the mother. Well, the pups continued to grow and to grow and to grow. It's a true story. They kept growing, and lo and behold, as they grew, they seen their mom pulling herself because all the mom, her back two legs were broke. And her hip was dislocated and damaged. And the mom, all she could do was, was, was pull herself. Her, her legs were broken. Her hip was out of joint. Well, the pups stayed around mom and they watched mom. True story. <laughs> they, they, they got through nursing. And one day, the owner of the five pups came out. And all five pups were pulling themselves. They were pulling themselves. Right after my mom would go, and here would go the pups. Right behind mom, just getting it. Just getting it. I'm mean, just a true story. Well, they said the pups must have got hurt or damaged when the mom got hit by the truck. So they took the pups to Clint Durham. No, they didn't, not really, but this is something Clint would do, though. So they took the pups to the, to the vet. And I, I wrote this stuff down. I want you to get this. They took the pups to the vet. He examined them. He examined them from head to toe. The puppies, he said, there's nothing wrong with the pups. There's nothing wrong with the pups. Then the vet made a profound statement, and I quote, this is what the vet veterinarian said. The puppies think that's the only way to walk. They think it's normal to walk like their mama because that's all they've seen is the way their mama walks. And here's what God dropped in my spirit. I truly believe today by the unction of the Holy Ghost, there's a lot of Christians that are limping, <coughs> that are not walking the way God wants them to walk because that's the only way they've ever walked. And now these Christians think it's normal to be depressed and suicidal and down on their luck and busted and disgusted because that's all they've done. That's all they ever have. They walked. They've taken after some things in their life. Can I tell you this morning? Just because you've got family members that are drug addicts and dope addicts and dope fiends and alcoholics and addicted to porn does not mean that's the way you've got to live. That is not normal. That is not normal. You don't have to live like that. You don't have to live like that. Listen to this preacher. Change your mind. Change your stat. I quit dragging your legs. Hallelujah. I don't know about you, but I'm still becoming. I'm still under construction. But I'm getting better. I'm getting stronger. And I'm starting to walk on my own two legs now. I'm not on the milk no more. I'm on the Holy Ghost meat now. Hallelujah. I don't <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. See, there, there was no surgery that could fix the puppies. There was no surgery that could fix the puppies because her legs wasn't broke. But here's what Clint did. So the vet took the puppies away from their environment. Come on. He took the puppies away from their environment. And little by little, they began to walk. Can I tell you, some of you are in the wrong environment. 
Can I tell you, listen to me, you're not going to change your friends. The problem is your friends are changing you. You can't help your messed up husband. You can't help your messed up wife. You can't help your messed up self. Hello. Hello, you can't do it. You can't help your messed up self. But I'm telling you today that God, I'm telling you, listen, say, Brian, this is a preacher answer. No, this is a God answer. I'm telling you today, God can change you. I've changed my mind. I'm not going to be like people in my family. I'm not going to ever go down. If somebody wants to come into my life, they're going to have to go up. I'm not going down. Watch this. Some of you going out on a Friday and Saturday and partying. Watch this. You say, well, that's where Jesus will be. I've never seen Jesus in a bar drinking a beer. Oh, you say, preacher, now you're stepping on my toes. It's about time. You got ten. I got nine more to go. Listen to me. Are you transformed? You say, Brian, you're judging people. No, I'm a fruit inspector. If you call yourself a child of God, there should be marks of God in your life. Boy, this is some hateful preaching today, isn't it? There should be a difference. It took me a long time to realize I had a friend that loved to drink whiskey. Loved to drink, well, I'm talking, he had a filth of whiskey under his driver's seat. Loved to drink whiskey. And I told Dane, I said, we, we'll be all right. We'll, we'll pray for him and we'll invite him over and this, that, and the other. Here's the problem, he'd come to the house drunk. He'd come to the house drunk. It wasn't Tommy. <laughs> but y'all know I'm telling you the truth. If you want to change... And listen to me, I, I say this as nice as I can. You can transform. Just think if you took your last drink of alcohol for the last time, wouldn't that be awesome? You say, Brian, you're for real, aren't you? Yeah. What if today you say, I'm transforming, I'm not going to go out and cheat no more. I'm just not going to do it no more. My wife or my husband deserves better than that, and they sure do. Man of God, I'm talking to you today. Woman of God, I'm talking to you today. What if God cheated on us? What if God saved you and then the next day he says, no, you've sinned in your life and I think I'm going to go out and find somebody else. I thank God I've got a God that won't let go. I praise his name this morning that when Brian Rafferty was lost, dying, undone and going to hell and messed up, he still loved me. And you've got a God here today. I'm telling you today, you've got a God that loves you just as you are. But he loves you so much, he don't want you to remain just as you are. He wants you to get better and stronger and stronger and stronger. He don't want you to limp no more. He wants you to change the thermostat. Even if you're in the fire, keep walking because he'll change the temperature. He'll do it for you. He'll help your marriage. Praise team, y'all come. He'll help your situation. He'll help your finances. But you got to change this right here. This is a dangerous tool. Your mind. Mind. Knowledge is power. Knowledge is power. You say, Brian, is there sometimes you want to act up and be, be silly? Yeah, all the time. Brian, is there sometimes you just want to go out and just kick back? Yeah. Yeah. But watch this. I've changed my mind. Turn to your neighbor and say, I've changed my mind. I know I used to act like a hellion. I've changed my mind. I'm going to start serving God. I knew I used to drink a little brewski on the side. But I've changed my mind and I'm going to start worshiping God. I, I, God says, be not filled with wine, but be filled with the Holy Ghost. I've changed partners. I want to start two-stepping with Jesus. Amen. I don't want to go back to who I used to be. I got, God's got greater things for me in my life. Amen. How many of y'all received the word this morning? Come on, receive this word this morning. Be transformed by the renewing of your mind. By your mind. Well, me and Dana, we get into it. 
not often, but sometimes. It's hard, to be honest with you, because I want to win. <laughs> don't don't y'all mean? Yes, y'all do. We want to win, because I think God's geared men differently. And all of a sudden, she'll say something like, I told you. <laughs> and then men, you'll sit there and go, no, you didn't. Yes, she did, and she's got power behind that, too. And it's hard. Sit there and go, you, you, I really, you, you're right. <laughs> but your marriage should be transformed. You should be transforming. Chris, you should not be the same as you was a year ago. Right. Transforming. Can I tell you something? I, I, don't, I got nine more little toes, so I, get, I use one more real quick. Man, there's no dedication in this generation. Man, there's no commitment in this generation. We got younger people that think they're just going to sit back and get a $40,000 job by not doing nothing. The money's going to come to them. Watch this. It's not going to come to you. You've got to do something. You've got to work. And we as adults, Guys, we get to 40 or 50, 60, 70, 80 years old, and we say, well, I've done my part. No, you haven't. You're not dead. Well, my marriage is going good. Oh, is it? How's your communication? How's your romance? If we didn't have kids in here, I'd go a little deeper. You say, Brian, you're crazy. No, I'm right. I'm right. Are you transformed in this house today? You say, Brian, I'm a Christian. But have you been transformed? Well, Brian, I come to church. I didn't say nothing about that. Have you been transformed? You say, Brian, how do you know if you're transformed? I'm glad you asked. You will start producing things that Jesus produced. You won't think the way you used to think. Your mind changes. Be transformed by the renewing of your mind. So the Bible says in Colossians chapter 2, I have the mind of Christ. So Alicia, my spiritual daughter, so hard to believe. I was your youth pastor, now I'm your pastor. That's hard. I look at you, I'm like, God, what would you do? You've transformed. Thank you. I don't know where Chris Wilson, I guess he's sick, him and Holly. I remember, man. When I was their youth pastor, we was over in that, that building over there downstairs. And I remember them too. And even the students in high school, y'all said these words. We love each other. And I said, be careful. It's a dangerous word. Well, now you're married, you've got two daughters. You've transformed. Tommy, 10 years ago from now, you've transformed. Gary, Four, four and a half years ago, you had a transformational moment. I can go down the line. Eddie, you're, you're different. You've transformed. Bob and Mary, I can, I can do a shift kit. You've transformed. Thank you. And I see a difference. It's all here. I'm telling you all the truth. I'm done. Listen. How are you transformed? Come on. Talk. By the renewing Renew, a new mind, renew, reprogram, reboot, whatever you got to do. Renew by the renewing of your minds. I wrote this down. Nobody will ever change the future if they keep driving backwards. Watch me, write that down. You will never change the future. You'll never change your situation. We'll never grow God's kingdom. My marriage will never bloom and blossom. Not unless I drive forward. But if I'm always looking back and going backwards, you'll never go to your destination. So Elkhorn, I leave the us with this verse. Aaron, I want you to put up Mark chapter 2. I leave us with this word. Transform. For Greg, this is good. I thought about this. Mark chapter 2, verse 21 and 22. I want y'all to look at this. No one sews a patch of unshrunk clothes, cloth 
on an old garment. If he or she does, the new piece will pull away from the old piece. Making the tear. Wow, Beth. So many people say, I want to go forward. But they try to put a new thing on the old thing. Y'all listen to me. Try to put a new thing on the old thing. It will not work. Y'all got this word? Please, do. this means yes, preacher. This means I don't, I don't know, preacher. Elkhorn, if you want a new thing, you can't put it on an old piece of cloth. Brother Dan Hunt's not your pastor. Brother Ron Gleaves is not your pastor. Brother Brian Rafford is your pastor. This is a new thing. This is a new work. This is a new step. This is a new generation. This is a new time. I watch this. I love Brother Dan and I love Brother Ron. They listen by the, they, they listen to these sermons all the time. But watch this. They done a great thing while they was pastors. But watch this. That's an old thing. It's an old thing. That's an old thing. Quit trying to put a new thing on an old thing that didn't work in the past. Or if it did work in the past, we can't put a new thing on an old thing. You can't do it. Well, we used to do this. When's the last time you baptized over 500 people? Help me. Well, we used to do this and we used to do that. Okay. That's good. That's really good. When have you ever had a $12,000 offering? Well, we used to do this and we used to do that. Okay. Keep sowing a new thing on the old thing and I promise you it'll tear and it'll be worse. I did not say that. Mark chapter 2, verse 21, 22. Let's read on. Y'all ready? Put it back over. Leave it up there. And no one pours new wine into old. But if they do, Sarah, if just, just in case they do, the wine will burst the skins. And both the wine and the wineskins will be ruined. Even the new wine. Watch this. Can I, can I speak a prophetic word over you? So many times, the reason why churches don't go forward is because God is trying to do a new thing, but they keep trying to put it in an old thing. And God will send a New Testament messenger, a new prophetic word, into the body of Christ. And the body of Christ that is set in their old traditional ways, in their old mindsets, will not accept the new gift from God, but they'll try to put the new gift on the old gift, and both of them will bust, and then you got a church split. Golly, that's such a good word. That's such a good word. How many of y'all want a new thing in your life? Be honest with me. It's dangerous. How many of you guys would say, man, my marriage could be better? If your hand's not up, you're horrible. You need, you need to crawl to the altar. Even Jim and Joan have been married for 48, 49, 47, 6. I'm like an auctioneer. It's 40-something. All right, let's ask them. 46 years. Jim and Joan. JJ. Have y'all got it figured out? He answered first. You trained him well. At 46 years, I'm sure y'all have learned a lot. Still learning. That's, that's what I was going to ask you. Did y'all hear that? After 46 years of marriage, they're still learning. So, here's what I'm trying to tell us this morning. By the renewing of our mind, we'll be transformed. And I promise you as your pastor, I will not lead you if it's not in that Bible. lead you. If it's not in the Bible, we ain't doing it. I'm going to lead by the Bible. How many of y'all can trust that? So here's what I'm going to ask you. I thought about Elkhorn. To get where you guys was at from 1995 to 2013 like a graph, you've had some up times, down times, up times, down times. And here's what God keeps speaking to me. Y'all ready? Watch this. Why do we got to go down? Why can't we go up? So here's what I want to tell you guys. Y'all ready for this? 
Come March the 31st, we got to make a transition in this church. We're going to add a service to this church. I think it's a great thing. Because here's the thing. This place is packed. I don't want people sitting on the stairs. I want them sitting out here where the anointing's at. I know the anointing get up there and down the hallways. But here's the thing. It would go in two services. First service would be from 8 to 9. That's good, 8 to 9. He said, my goodness, that's like a work day. No, it's not. You get up early anyway. 8 to 9. First service. You say, Brian, it's going to happen in an hour. Watch this. We're going to be spirit led, whether it's an hour, two hours. You can say eight to twelve, and it don't matter. God can get done at at, at eight thirty. Whenever God's finished, watch this. We're finished. But here's what I need from you. Already, this is your pastor sharing his heart. I need you to support this. If we're going to grow, we got to make room for people. We got to make room for people parking lot we're trying to we're, we're expanding our parking lot it's good things the guys i'm gonna tell you great job great job eight to nine will be our beginning service and then from nine nine thirty you know we're gonna have so cafe grab your grab and go breakfast from nine thirty to ten thirty you're gonna have sunday school and then from ten thirty to twelve we're gonna have our our last worship service you say brian how's it gonna work watch this i've never been to this point in my life i don't know watch this we can make it work if we're all together. We can make this work if we're all together. Here's what's starting to happen. If you want a new thing and you try to put it on an old thing, it's going to tear. It's going to bust. So that's what we're going to do, man. That's what we're going to start, okay? How many of you know God's kingdom's not up for vote? Watch this. We don't get to vote if we're going to grow it or not. God said grow it. So watch this. We don't get to vote on this decision. I know that hurts some of your hearts, but we don't get to vote on this decision. Why? Because God said what, Tommy? Grow my kingdom. And you know what? What if we can listen to this? Why would we go into a building program with 500 and we got the potential of 1,000? We can put 500 to this service and 500 to the first service. You got 1,000 people. And most people say, no, I don't want to do it. I just want to do it with 500. They bring their tithe with them. Y'all, y- yes, they do. They bring their money. They bring their talents with them. That means this. Everybody in here gets a job ministry. Isn't that good? Some of you, I'm going to tell you right now, get to work the parking lot. Some of you get to be a greener. Congratulations. Some of you get to go to a Sunday school class and teach. It's awesome. I know, I can just tell by your enthusiasm. But I'm telling you the truth. Kurt, we're going to grow God's kingdom. And here's how, here's how I, I believe this. Y'all ready? If y'all don't want to grow God's kingdom, tell me now. Watch me. Tell me, please, tell me now. Tell me now if you don't want to grow God's kingdom. And I'll make arrangements. I'll do something else. Because I'm that sold out for God, Beth, that either we're going to win it and we're going to take as many as we possibly can with us, Mark. Or I don't want to be a part of it. Watch this. I don't want just an old church service. How many of y'all? Anybody want just an old church service? That means somebody's going to have to give their seat up. That means we're going to have to make more parking spots. You say, Brian, what about our fellowship? Watch this. Here's what we're going to do. The first Sunday of every month, we're going to have a big fellowship. We're going to all come back together, and we're going to fellowship. We're thinking about this. Hey, y'all watch this. Y'all ready? We're going to make a mistake. But I promise you, we love you, and we're thinking about you. So come March the 31st, part of this transformation. The metamorpho, the metamorphosis from a silkworm to the cocoon stage to the butterfly. We're going to get to the butterfly and we're going to start flying in this community and make a difference for God. Amen. Come on, stand to your feet. Amen. Guys, I love you.
I love you, I love you, I love you. Conformed or transformed? Conformed or transformed? Are you being transformed right now? By what? The renewing of your minds. I'm not going to be what people say I am. I'm not. And Bobby, I'm so hard-headed that if I make my mind up, I'm going to get her done. How many of you know there's lost souls right now? How many of you know right now in this room there's probably a lost soul? Does that bother you? Let's start praying for them, okay? So Father God, in Jesus' name.